The McElroy brothers are not experts, and their advice should never be followed. Travis insists he's a sexpert, but if there's a degree on his wall, I haven't seen it. Also, this show isn't for kids, which I mention only so the babies out there will know how cool they are for listening. What's up, you cool baby? The start of something beautiful. A small acquaintance has blossomed and ripened into a precious friendship. I could have never seen what was coming for me. Hangs at the skate park, hangs by the beach. My life, it feels like. Everybody and welcome to my brother, my brother, me, and oh. my show for the modern era. I'm your oldest brother, Justin McElroy. I'm your middle brother, Travis <laughs> McElroy. He's got a pretty kitty. He's got a pretty kitty. Yes, it's true. I have a pretty new kitty. Her oh. name is Olive or Olivia. Hello, I'm a pretty kitty. Now, oh, look at that special cat. Is that her real name, Justin? Because we were told a different name yesterday. Well... She came home and her name was Olive. And then um, the girls decided Grizabella, you know, the glamour cat. Of course. Yes. Yeah. From Cats. The From the hit movie that Cats. I, that we all love. That I love. Yeah. You love. We all love. Yeah. It's in our blood. And um, then I, Sydney and I decided we we're going to keep calling her Olive. I don't As like protest, that which you usually don't do to your kid. You don't usually do a protest. Well, to it your was going to be an evening name. Uh, I After see. the kids were asleep. Oh, yeah. Oh, I thought you were saying the inverse. I thought you were saying in the evening time when the Jellicle cats historically do come out and prance, that is when she becomes Grizabella. Well, we, no. I think we can agree that the only confusing thing about cats is the what is a Jellicle name? What's the human given name? What oh, is yeah. their chosen name? Look right, because it's three different ones. Fucking kitty. Look at those little toe beans. Because you, you can't tell me that like kidding. Jenny Annie Dots is the same as like Rumple Teaser. Those are two yeah. different worlds those that those names exist in. Planets. Yeah, they two can't all be the same. Look at that kitty. Is she changing color to match your shirt? Is she a chameleon? That would be kitty? wild if I had a chameleon kitty. This she is so little one to listen kitty. to, just like the My audio Christ. of it, right? But she's so little. We record this show on video now, and that's what happens is the cat comes and hangs out sometimes, I guess. I was sitting on your shoulder like a pretty little parrot, like a sweet parrot on a feed. And kitty she likes you, too. which is nice. She's she a nice change you. of pace to my other cat that I've Does she like me? Decade. Does yeah, she like you, you? Let's see. Ask her. Hi, pretty kid. Hi, pretty Oh, kitty. she loves Griffin. I love you, Griffin. You're my best friend. Yeah, Whoa. your best friend. Dad, he- blo- beauty blogging me, Dad. <laughs> Stop <Yeah>. being focused. <laughs> All right, you Juice, can go. you got to beauty blog that kitty. You're dismissed. Oh, I'm just going to stay here on my lap. <laughs> guys, guys, guys. Yeah. The cat's on my lap, and I'm like, <laughs> Mr. Bigglesworth. <laughs> Oh yeah, do some oh, of your yeah, do like some Doctor Dr. Evil jokes, Dr. Mr. Evil. Bigglesworth. No, Mr. Bigglesworth. Oh man, I should have named. How many bad cats? How many bad mystery like cats that were not not well loved? Do you think were named Mr. Bigglesworth after uh, the great Austin awesome all of them. character? All of them. Yeah, all of them. I just I you know right until this moment when you said how many bad cats or whatever, and it made me think. What if, like, Mr. Bigglesworth or, like, that cat that Blofeld was always hanging out with, what if they were really nice? What if those cats were like, no, oh, don't hurt them. Oh. Come on. A couple of beauty babies, like, oh, rude. Oh, oh, gosh. Justin went away. Yes, the kitty went away. It was distracting to everyone, and we can't do our podcast. I want the kitty on the show instead of Justin. There, I said it. <sighs> I want three kitties on the show instead of Oh, my of God. Us. Are you kidding me? Ugh, I used to idea. not like my brother, my brother and me, but now that it's silence with occasional purrs, it's good. Yeah. It's a good show. It's Have you played show. that that weird mod of Stray where it's just three brother kitties and instead of exploring and they love each like other a city, very much yeah, they're just recording a podcast. I love it. Um, they don't reference Turbo Teen as much, but yeah, that's okay because it's it's three pretty kitty boys. They talk about mice a lot more. Yeah. All right. Well, I feel like all the oxygen got sucked out of the room the moment the cat did. Yeah, definitely. Um, did we leave. should just call this episode. 
this is this 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 is um this is actually perfect. Oh, okay. Uh, this is actually perfect. Like uh, connection here because I am desperate to talk to you guys about a podcast called Hank the Cow Dog. Now, oh, are you I don't f- know this? Okay, good. That's perfect. Actually, um, so I was listening to Blank Check, and they were talking about. Uh, I don't know how they got onto it, but they started talking about Hank the Cow Dog, and they had just discovered its existence, and then I in turn discovered it through their discovery. And um, I just want to tell you guys about Hank the Cow Dog. Oh, please. Okay, yeah. cool. It is, is it will it, okay? Is the self is it funny or is this like are we getting really pop culture happy? I want to talk it? to you about the cast. Okay. Okay. Does it include okay. a dog? It stars Matthew McConaughey as Hank the Cow Dog. Okay. Good start. Good start, right? It also includes, it's written and directed by uh, Jeff Nichols uh, exe- okay. and executive produced by Jeff Nichols. Um, it stars oh, Matthew McConaughey sorry. as Hank, who uh, also McConaughey served as executive producer. Justin, I, I hate to stop you real quick, but I, I think there's been some confusion. Um, you said podcast, but clearly this can't be a podcast because it like has one a celebrity in it, and then two, you said it's written uh, and directed. Yeah, I think yeah, you're really not actually supposed to, to write yeah. them. I think you're talking yeah. about like a movie or maybe a TV show or like a radio Are you drama. Of, okay, so Jeff Nichols did direct Matthew McConaughey in Mood, the movie Mood, Correct. and yes. now they're working together again with Matthew McConaughey as Hank. A spiritual okay. successor to Mud. I haven't seen it, but dogs love Mud. Jesse yeah. Plemons as Good. Drover. Okay. Sure. Kirsten Dunst as Sally May. John I R. Erickson that. as Wallace the Buzzard. Michael yeah. Shannon as Sinister the Bobcat. Joel Edgerton as Rip and Snort. And then you got Leslie uh, Jordan and Cynthia Riva bringing up the back of this 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 incredible cast. This yeah. incredible cast of United for Hank the Cow Dog, a five episode event. Now, if you were to tell me when this series was released, I bet with a little bit of thinking, you could carbon date it to almost a month. Can I guess? Yeah. I'm going to say uh, June 2020. Wow. wow. Travis, wow. August of 2020. So oh, there's a, a little bit in post. They had a yes, little bit of post sure. work to do to make Michael Shannon really sound like sinister. You well, know, what everyone I mean? was trying well, to. Well, hold on. Wait, wait, wait. Stop. It does not take much work to make Michael. Sh- I met Michael Shannon for eight seconds at a restaurant. Did you and really? Was, yeah, and yeah, Griffin and I pissed to be his like, pants. <laughs> I pissed my pants right and, down. And somehow he pissed Michael Shannon's pants. It was amazing. I like, thought he didn't have any food yet, and so I was like, I bet he won't mind if I go say hey to Michael Shannon. So I walked up, and he looked up at me like, we're eating. Like, <laughs> is that what he said? What are you eating? No, he didn't really say that. What a pleasure yeah. it is to meet you, Griffin. Yeah. I'm a Hollywood big shot, Michael Shannon. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm learning my lines for a bobcat roll. <laughs> I'm playing <laughs> sinister. It's the role of a lifetime. Nothing else is happening. No, not Justin. I'm sorry. I hate it. Right. This was years before he played. Saint. He was just preparing for a bobcat role, knowing it he would come. To walk. He was Sunday. manifesting. I'm gonna be yeah. a bobcat. It's um, not really I'm, what he sounds like. It's weird. They didn't come back to this one after the sort of pandemic restrictions were lifted for Hollywood types. Yeah. Not a lot of return. I think they just made those five and then kind of did it. They well, po- it podcasting is hard, man. Not everybody can put out 600 some episodes. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like uh, a lot of quitters out there. Apparently, it's funny you say that, Trav. Apparently, according to an email I received, I said in episode like 12 or 13 that this would be the final episode. Of this my one, this one we're recording. Me. This one we're recording. Yeah, right this now. one we're recording right now. Six, whatever. I mean, whatever. We should have prepared point. more. I don't. I don't think of it. I don't think of it as episodes anymore. No, no. It's a conversation. Oh, okay. It's back no, I just we're talking. Okay. It's jazz. I regret to inform everyone. It's jazz. It's jazz. <laughs> You've been listening to jazz this whole time and you didn't know. You notice. have been hearing jazz. And it's not the kind of jazz your Enjoying. dad likes. Oh, okay. Oh. Sorry. Yeah, I got ahead of the thing. Um, well, is- that happens sometimes when we're, jazz- when we're just jazzing. 
Oh, she's just sitting behind my monitor. What a cute you little kitty. What kids. a stinker. I bet it's warm back there. Should um, we do advice? Yeah, let's do advice. I'm in the process of moving and I have no chairs to sit on and I eat in my place now. And eat. No place oh, to sit I no, and eat. I, I got my clauses have weird emphasis. Like kitty clauses? Oh, oh, God, shit. I love kitty clauses. I'm in the process of moving and I have no chairs to sit on and eat in my place. Ah, okay. I have no chairs to sit on and eat in my place now. There we go. I ordered pizza for me and my roommates. That's nice. And then they left to get drinks while I waited. Now the delivery driver has given me the large 24 inch. Fuck, that's large. That's, that's a big. big you got to turn that sideways hey, to bud, go through the door. That's two feet of saw. That's yeah. one foot shy of a big foot. Well, like, no, it's a two round. feet. It's a two feet diameter. But I'm sure if we could do a little bit of pi r squared calculation, we could figure out what the, what the actual uh, area of the pizza is. But yes, it's impossible. So. Actually, you cannot figure out oh. the area of a circle. Oh, um, damn. Does People it matter? Have tried. It's People weird. have tried. Um, but, uh, that's not the important thing. The important thing is the only place to put it and eat is on the ground in the living room. You don't got kitchen counters? What? You don't got kitchen counters? No. The only place to put it and eat is on the ground in the living room. The living room has a huge window, which he can clearly see me from. The driver. Mm -hmm. The driver. And he has been sitting, um, in his car for about three minutes and I've just been standing with the pizza behind a column, so he won't see me sitting on the floor. That's good. <laughs> You're off, good at this. Eating off the floor. <laughs> You're doing good. Alone. <laughs> I think so far the job you're doing is ex is ex is exemplary. Is this a ridiculous? Should I care this much or just do it? I'm so very hungry. Again, this is a large, and they they have it all caps here. A large 24 inch pizza. That's from. I do think that's important. Older. That is important. That it's a large because if the driver rolls up, you're in what sounds like an empty apartment, like empty, yeah. bare. And it's just you, and you ordered a large 24, there is, is I'm just gonna say, a slightly disturbing imagery that I'm getting Yeah, now. for the driver. You need yeah. to set up a sort of home alone shadow play situation on the curtains and blinds. I mean, you don't have furniture in your house, so I'm gonna assume you don't have a big inflatable clown and a talk boy. Well, you know what happens around. when you assume. Oh, yeah, I guess yeah, that's good fair. Point. Really good point, um, thank you. I want to say 24 inches is pretty big. Yes. There was a place I used, a Mediterranean place I got pizza from in Austin, and it's called Arpeggio Grill, and they had what they called the giant 30-inch mm -hmm. pizza that they had to slice so th I think we had some of that when you boys were in town for, my, for uh, mine and Rachel's wedding. Correct. And it, it's such a big pizza, and they it's have to cut pizza. the slices really thin, and it looks like a clown's necktie. And, and they, had the, uh, they had to slightly angle it to get it through your front door, if I remember they correctly. They did, yeah, and in, my, in the, the trunk of my uh, Toyota Matrix. Anyway, I think... Speaking of some, you boys can see behind me. I have nothing. Um, <laughs> yeah. And that is a, the rules are suspended when you have just moved in a way that you would be, uh, it, it would be a shame for you to waste that opportunity. Mm -hmm. This is the time where it's okay for you to sit on floor and eat pizza. Some of my most special memories in the last house that uh, I lived in was just sitting on the floor with my with my my fam, my buds, yeah, and just gobbling down some P. Terry's burgers on the ground. On the ground, and special, because spe you're connected to the root of it, where the where the burger came from. The I earth. Think, you know, think how much you'll appreciate having table and chair. Oh you my know what god! I, mean? I have you also know used to sit on the floor. You'll say. I uh, was a delivery driver for Jimmy John's for a there while, which I'm sure I've talked about. We are. Um, the driver does not care. Three minutes feels like a long time, but let me tell you a little secret. He's just, for him, that's three minutes where he's not at work. That's yeah. all he's thinking about, baby, is that yeah, three minutes. disappeared from his sphere yeah. of awareness the moment yeah. that door shuts. You because no there's exists. no way that this is the first time a pizza delivery driver has delivered to someone moving into an apartment. Hey, As Griffin has I'll said, it's such a common connection of like, help me move, I order pizza. I'll just say it too. Three minutes? Maybe that guy should roll on out. <laughs> you know, see, maybe he should roll on out. Maybe I was going to say maybe three maybe minutes isn't that long. Three minutes is a long. Imagine someone pulling up outside your house, and they're yeah. look. You notice it. That car, honey. That car's been there for three minutes. That's a weird amount of time to idle outside someone's home. 
Okay, I here's what I'll give you. You are correct. I've never been a pizza delivery driver. Maybe he was like noting it in his logbook or right. something. Like, Depending I, on which side of the equation you're on, three minutes is a long time. If you're in the house looking out, Three minutes is a long time that they're sitting yeah. there. If you're the driver and your friend sends you a great long form TikTok and you're like, well, I'll yeah. watch this before I hit the road. I want to be responsible and not watch TikToks while I drive and they don't let Appreciate me watch TikTok. It. Then three minutes is nothing, yeah. right? Yeah, but that's I guess, true. That's about how long it takes to pack a bowl of that green stuff, which I bet. Oh, I see. Not to cast. Not to cast. Uh, I had a dilemma yesterday. I want to bounce it off the two of you. Speaking of cars being in places where they shouldn't be for a long time. Lightning McQueen uh, showed up one to fight you. He wanted to fight me for the love of my wife. Whoa. Like, not again. Um, it, someone left a car in our driveway in the morning. And at first I was like, oh, that's weird. Someone parked in our driveway. Like, who who does that? It's a one, it's a one spot DC driveway. That we, and, and we don't have permits to park on the street. It was very inconvenient. And so I was like, ah, I bet they'll move it. A couple hours later, it's still there. I was like, that's weird. Anyway, I'm gonna check the mail. Open up the mailbox. The keys to the car were in the mailbox. What? Someone had de- someone had delivered an automobile into my possession uh, huh. incorrectly, and there was no information on whose actual car it was, oh where God, it belonged, <laughs> how to get, how to how to do it, how to how to do the thing. So I, I would did dri- put I it had in to neutral, drive it, push it in the street, <laughs> street, and just leave it. Call the police. I had to, there, I had help. to get. There's a car. I had, to, I had to move it so that I could park in our driveway so we wouldn't get a ticket. You uh, got into this illicit So vehicle. I got into You got your fingerprints. Let's look at what it is. Stole a car. Yeah. I did do a Grand Theft Auto for like So you fell for the bait seconds. car. You got your fingerprints all over it. Yes. I, oh, <laughs> Griffin, my innocent boy, my young, my young, uh, naive gentleman, your assumption that someone incorrectly delivered that car and not dropped like a what could be a like murder clue yeah. into your driveway, they were just framing you, and they're like, "This is Griffin's problem now." <laughs> yeah. And. And. Then and? what did you do? Oh, I I I moved it out into the street. And I left it there for a while, and still nobody came to get it. So I went door to door. And fortunately, like on the third house I went to, but those house. first you two you houses, me you didn't drive it, right? I I did have to say I was like, uh, yeah. So it's nice to meet you. Yeah, we're just across the street. I drove your car, so we'll see you <laughs> at the pot. No, it's Christine. You can't drive it. She'll yeah, kill you. It She's imprinted. Like Christine. Yeah. Um. Hey, can I do? Can I do a wizard? Oh, I love that, Griff. I love. Yeah, that. do a wizard on us. What do you Step think, down. Olivia? What do you think? She wants what do you to think, step one. God damn. Stefan sent this in. It's uh, how to not get creeped out by a chain letter. Oh, good. You come Ooh, home from true. school or work. You take off your shoes, turn on the TV, and check your email. You look around and see a message. You read it, and you realize it's a piece of chain mail with a threat. Wait, hold if on. Can I jump it, back real quick? The series please, of events please. there, turn on your TV and check your email. There's a disconnect there, and then you look around <laughs> and see a message. Like, what? where's the information coming from in this scenario? The TV, the air around you? Yeah, Trav, I'm scared shitless right now, so sorry, if we could just sorry. power through this. Yeah, if you. you don't forward it to 10 people, you'll get a frightening consequence. What do you do? What to do? This how-to explains how to deal with this. Also works on comments such as sites as YouTube. Mm-hmm. Okay, mm-hmm. yeah, sometimes I am just trying to, you know, ASMR myself into the sweet oblivion of sleep, and I'll be scrolling through, and it's like, if you don't... Like this comment 69 times, then uh, your dad is going to fall, is going to, re- gravity will reverse for him and he'll yeah. fall up into you space. You all know, you've seen these letters. That you've yeah, you've seen, these, seen these YouTube comments. Um, this is Steph- why, I, I hate to spoil it, but I assume this comes up. This is why whenever I go to a place like Bed Bath & Beyond or like uh, Yankee Candle and they're like, do you want to sign up? For like our yes. email newsletter, I say yes. And then I when they email me, I write down that email address. And I just oh, keep 10 good. of those right next to me, ready to go, shotgun so, style. Awesome, so when you get one, it's like your gravity gravity's gonna reverse on yeah. your dad, he'll fall up into space if you don't send this to 10 people. Well, you'd be like, what's up, Bed Bath Beyond? What's up, Yankee Candle? All what's I'm up? saying is, I heard Circuit City didn't forward it to 10 people. Yeah. Look at them now. Yeah. Did, did you guys, um? Did, do, have you all, when you're at the, the store and you're checking out, they're like, um, just need your email address and your phone number. Have you guys ever made up fake ones to yes. avoid yes. having to say, I'd rather not give you my email address? 
Absolutely, I have. No, I'm. I, Devin's not getting paid enough. You don't think Devin? You don't think Devin would like that too? No, not. I'm the eighth person to type in Stinky Cheeks at Gmail.biz that day. Stinky Cheeks sixty nine. We could Sorry, not stinky. secure Stinky Cheeks at Gmail.biz. Yeah. Well, I had to put an underscore in Just it to be quick, real quick. Yeah. You guys think? You guys think Gmail.biz is available, right? For sure, right? Hey, you Justin. Would think so, yeah. Yeah, that's gonna hurt our brand, I think, in the long run. You think Gmail dot biz? Mm. I don't think so. Juice, snatch that up for me. I'll pay you back. Sometimes the dot biz can get a little pricey. Let's see how this it one does. is doing. Gmail, <laughs> go, go, Gmail dot biz is taken. I knew it. it. How what about this, how could this be? It's fucking Gmail dot gov. This, I mean, they're I listening get, in. I could Gmail dot me. <laughs> dot me. Gmail me, bro. Gmail me, me, bud. Shoot me a goo mail. We got goo mail, <laughs> goo mail dot fun. <laughs> goo mail dot me was it. We found it. It's goo mail dot org. Hello. Ooh. We're goo mail, an org. <laughs> We're a regular <laughs> nonprofit. We need to sell goomail.com or just gift it to our favorite nonprofit and be like, this is it. this is for you now. This is yours now. Okay, so let's get into the article. I'm not Think. buying any goo mails. If I can't get goo mail dot biz, it's like not. Yeah, now, what about all goomail.com? <laughs> Get goomail dot <laughs> Get goomail. Okay. Okay. What it th- think? What is the chain mail? Is it BBQ at my house? I won't like it if you don't come. Oh. If it is, you're fine. It's not really an alarming thing. Just a friend who expects you to show up and might be sore at you if you don't. If not, continue on. I would say that's an alarming thing. Yeah. If someone sent me a message like, "Hey, grilling up some some sweet uh, beefy boys in my house," I won't like it if you don't come. And also, would, that's not really, sorry, article, a chain mail. That's called an invitation. If someone yeah. is chain mailing invitation and says, invite 10 other people to this, yeah. that's yeah. wild. That's lazy, also. Uh, don't get drawn into reading it. Usually at the top, there is something such as, don't read this, or stop. If there is, you should stop and delete it. Good chain advice letters, in general. Chain letters often tell you to read or don't read as a ploy, playing on your initial curiosity. So you read them, they'll eventually hit you with a bunch of baloney designed to push your panic button or use any other emotion you have against you for one purpose only to get you spreading it further. So I guess if you get email and it's like, read this or don't read this, then delete Just do the that. opposite? <sighs> but here's the problem. I get a lot of emails from my doctor with important like test results. I go like once yeah. a week just to get random tests, whatever they got. And yeah. they, they'll any usually new tests? Hey, so... <laughs> Travis here. Uh any new tests today? <laughs> yeah, we got three new ones. Which one do you want? Surprise me. Yeah. Um, no, no, and no. Then... See, I was j- this is something I want to talk about. Remember, okay. about me. Characters okay, so... welcome. Yeah. We're doing yeah. a scene. Okay, yeah. that was a scene of vignette. That was a skit, a skit. A skit. I want us to get better about skits, okay? Because okay, a lot yeah, of times yeah, yeah, we sorry. default to, I'm going to play everybody in my skit. And I feel like it would That's be good. That's not fair. I've been meaning to talk to you guys about this when we're not recording, but like this is Yeah, yeah, no, do it here. Yeah, this is Don't the, double the right up time. on the skit. Let other people have fun with the, the skit, skit you with made. you, right? Oh, yeah. okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'd like you to try, try it again? again? Okay. <laughs> Fucking whistle. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, honey. Daddy's trying to whistle. Okay. Sorry, that your daddy's a bad whistler. <laughs> Travis here. Any new tests today? I've got a gun. <laughs> oh, holy shit! I've got a, I've got, a, I've got a sword gun. Whoa. Damn it! Yeah, you win. No, I don't want to be in this skit. Oh, hey, who's that at your door? <laughs> uh, this is my little brother Griffin. He's recording a podcast with me. Hey, what's up? <laughs> You like guns? <laughs> he's I got a gun too. Gun. <laughs> yeah, look out! He's got a sword gun, and he loves tests. <laughs> I'm instigating this. This is the this is one of the worst skits we've ever done. If I if I may, we should stick uh, to one person per skit. <laughs> yeah, I think it's better. Future. So if you get an email that says, "Oh, like don't read this or stop," uh, then don't read it and do stop. Uh, stay rational and sensible. Often the email or comment will be some story, commonly about some monster or fictional dead kid attacking people. <laughs> Don't lose your head and get scared. There is no such thing as monsters. Well, or <laughs> dead kids attacking people. You've known that since you were small. No chain letter is going to cause w- to one to blip into existence to kill you or anyone else. You know dead people are dead and can't go around attacking you, pulling you down into some non-existent well or do any of those things that these supposedly what? creepy chain letters <laughs> this claim. This is so specific. Yeah. You know your dad's ex-boyfriend, Daryl, isn't going to come back to your house? 
I don't know shit about shit, first of all. Yeah. I know that up till now that hasn't happened, but mm-hmm. also up till now I've always forwarded every chain letter I've ever got. Correct. Yeah. So yeah. you've got a chain of chain letters. You don't want to break that chain. Yeah. Nice chain try. To never break Victorian, the chain. Victorian skeleton boy. But you will never get me to go in that well because you're not real. You're not and real. And the that. well's not real either. But if it is, I did forward the chain letter. So I have nothing. I'm double down yeah. safe. Um, understand it's hard when you're a Victorian skeleton boy and you just have like a really cool rock collection inside a well. And you're like, come oh, check out yeah. these rocks. And they're like, no. And you're like, I'm not. I just want to. Ugh. You can't have a house when you're a Victorian skeleton boy. In this like, economy? In this economy, especially not. Uh, the consequences of not following along with the chain communication do not exist. After you read the story, it will say something like, if you do not send this to 10 people, you will die in two days. I assume through some sort of Victorian well boy drowning Yeah, it's like a well related yeah, 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 debacle. Yeah. connected. Um, think, will this happen to you? Will you actually die because you didn't send an email? How is it even possible a made-up story and text and pixels created by some anonymous hoaxer can actually kill you? Well, I don't it, know. I know. If I knew that, then I would be the one sending right. the scary murder email. You can't say. You can't say. Will it happen? Because the whole point is, I don't know. Yeah. Right? I don't know the future. I don't understand the um, what the author of the scary Victorian skeleton boy chain letter email gets out of it, unless they're like, send this to ten people, and also here's a link to my band camp. And yeah. I've got a new, I've got this, I've got a really hot new sound I've been working on. Uh, Check that out. Oh, the hot new sound will also keep the scary Victorian skeleton well boy away yeah, from Yeah, so you. blast that. So do that. both things. Subscribe to, smash that like button, forward it to 10 friends, or the skeleton boy is going to well you be really there. hard. I wish I could be there when this person finds this article. Like, okay, Valerie, calm down. It's okay. It's just a chain letter. We're going to get through this. <laughs> yeah. Let's just go to Yahoo. Let's Google yeah. it. Now, this step is, fucks me up. Step five, don't send it to anyone else. Doing this stops other people from getting it and passing it on and getting worse. Okay, so you do want me to be drowned in a well. Yeah. So which, is, which is it? Which is right? it? Which of the two things is it? Because you're telling me not to be scared of the chain email. And in my personal experience, that means giving into the demands of the chain email. Guys, I right. figured it out. I'm going to Go solve ahead, this whole thing. I'm okay. going to fix, fix chain letters for good. Yeah, what it's going to take is 12 brave souls, right? And then it's going to be a full-time job. But every time you get a chain letter, you're going to forward it to these same 12 people, right? And then they're going to forward it to each other. And just as chain letters come in, we're just going to keep sending it to these same 12 people until okay. eventually we've created like an echo chamber for every chain letter until it's just these 12 people bouncing it back and forth to each other. It should be 13, I guess, because you need one to send it to 12 others, right? Right. And we're just going to bounce it around and contain the energy. Now, God forbid, when one of them kicks it, oh, boy. This is going to become like a Knights of the Round Table thing of like you're going to have to find somebody to take over. You're going to love this. You know what we call it? What? The the Unbroken Chain. And it's a group of people that just keep passing it around. They protect all of us. Yes, it's yeah. like a chain letter toilet that you just flush, flush down it down that endless That fire. is also the secret society from Adventures on Graduation, but that's yes, fine. It, um, no, but that's how they got started, right? Oh, okay, this is great, like great, a great. prequel. To, this is a prequel to our pretend podcast, yeah. which is different from this podcast. Uh, our very real podcast. This one gets fun. Keep the email. Even if it is absolutely creepy, keep the email and smash it. Write out all the things wrong with it and make yourself laugh at the utter ridiculousness of the story and the threat attached. Keeping the message is a good way of stopping a troublesome emailer. You tell someone, teacher, parent, friend, Don't tell someone. Tell someone, teacher, parent, friend, etc. You have proof of getting this unwanted email. Teacher, teacher, check this out, please. I'm going to show this to you. I'm not going to forward it to you, so the curse will not be activated. But I need you to know that I have been threatened with a well boy and I do something think about it, I guess. They, we're getting into semantics though, right? Because right. yeah, you're not mechanically forwarding, electronically forwarding it, but you are no. like moving the information in the brain. The digital data is how the curse is transmitted. Okay. See, you I've never seen The Ring for obvious reasons, but yeah. I do know that in stories like The Ring, like there's always that moment of like, huh, you heard about it? Check this out. There's no way, right? And like that idea of, I like this thing of don't take it seriously, 
But don't not take it seriously. Like, right. just continue. at least let the buck stop with you. So that's how to not get creeped out by a chain letter. Um, confront the sender. Uh, if the person sends you three or more emails, tell someone else. You've already told the teacher, I guess, get multiple ha- just sort of hands on yeah, the ball. Yeah, tell someone else. First you tell the teacher and then the vice principal and then the principal. That That's the chain of command. It doesn't go any higher. That's why it's called the chain letter. Yeah. Yeah. You pass that on up the chain to your principal. Yeah. Oh, no. You're vice principal. Don't take that. Don't. Hey, get this off my desk. I'm the principal of a major middle school. I don't have time for chain letters. Take this to the associate vice principal. He'll I'm going to have to talk the to the superintendent about this. He passes the letters to me, and then I give them to President Joseph Biden. <laughs> <laughs> And he forwards worry, them guys. to our nation's greatest enemies. And then the well boy hunts down terrorists. I New will, from Amazon Prime. Well boy. Well boy. <laughs> well, well boy, you're our last one, hope. I'm sending this to Kim Jong. <laughs> Kim Jong Un, well boy. You and Dennis Rodman are going to work together on this one. <laughs> I told you I'm not working with Rodman no more. I can't trust him. Push him in the world. Get me skin. Jack Reacher. That was Dennis Rodman's voice. <laughs> I meant to tell you, by the way, yeah. Well, boy, sounds like this. Yeah. Well, boy, has seen some shit. <laughs> well, well yeah. boy's been in a well or two. I, guess I don't think you say. get to be a Victorian well, boy, skeleton child without being a little bit jaded. <laughs> well, I've seen a lot of the inside of a lot of wells, pal. Once you've once you've pushed non-forwarding strangers into a well or two, we'll talk about it. Changes hey. you. Changes you being down in a well for so long. Hey, can we try to do... Let's you do see the money this, You see the ear about this, Jessica? It's a baby. <laughs> you steal my whole yeah, shit. Yeah, well, boy. I'm sure you bring that one up a lot, well, boy. There's not a lot of famous well characters, I well, just boy. need to finish the job, and it's my yeah. fault. Okay. Oh, she no. Had sin- she had sinned. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Jesus, well, boy. Yeah, baby um, Jessica was a creature of sin, and I was trying. Doing my best like that one part of the leftovers. She ended up okay, though, right? I don't want to talk She's about fine. it. She's fine. Okay. She's adorable and evil. She'll forward um, every fucking letter she receives. This kid, <laughs> this kid's forwards <laughs> Menards flyers that she gets just to be, just to be extra careful. She's not going back to the well, and that's what I live for. That's why I'm in this business, brother. <laughs> I'll be damned if I'm gonna give up wells for you or anybody. Okay. Maybe I, I might try a cistern or two just to see how it goes. <laughs> I watched a video of Macho Man Randy Savage on Arsenio Hall, and Arsenio Hall's like, does the Macho Man ever cry? And he's like, oh, yeah, brother, the Macho Man experiences the entire range of emotion. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> yes. That's yes. Macho as fuck, man. Yeah. Fuck yeah, yeah dude. dude. Uh, let's do the money zone, but in chain letter format, so we get the most sort of uh, <laughs> impressions we've okay, ever yeah, yeah, gotten yeah. in our lives. Got it. Let's go to money zone. It's better. It's better you. Um, Squarespace is the all-in-one platform for building your brand and growing your business online. Stand out with a beautiful website, engage with your audience, and sell anything: your products, content you create. And even your time. Your soul. And tell every... What? And your soul. Sell your soul for the chain letter. Your soul. It's still not... It's still... I don't think... Anyway, tell everyone you know about Squarespace and share this episode of the podcast with them. Or else um, you will have a a bad time with it when next time that you are at the bus... Building, mm-hmm. yeah. It whenever you're, do you like having all your? How do you feel about your bones? Squarespace is an all-in-one platform for building your brand. Maybe that's it. Maybe we just sort of it's power of suggestion. Mm-hmm. Every Squarespace website and online store comes with a suite of integrated features and useful guides that maximize prominence among search results, and you all and you stay healthy and strong. Ooh, maybe we chain it like that. Oh, make it a positive chain letter. Yes. Yeah, like you, do you want to do you want to get like cooler and bigger and be able to eat more chicken wings in one sitting? Yes, do you want God to build up your finances? Yeah, 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 yeah. Great news. My friend Stason had a 
real bad finances problem mm-hmm. and t- told everyone that she knew about uh, Squarespace and then God sent her like a grip of cash. Like My smallest friend, Dwayne, uh, yeah. was feeling real puny and he used Squarespace and now he's The Rock. Whoa. He turned into The Rock. Yeah. Yeah. Overnight. Whoa. Um, Nobody talks about how Dwayne The Rock Johnson got bigged, right? But like, you never see teen rock. It's always there's young boy rock and then big man rock. Yeah, there wasn't a teen rock because he he forwarded on this incredible chain advertisement for Squarespace, and it, he got huge. And God gave him all the finances he needed. Sell your products on an online store, whether you sell physical or digital products. Squarespace has the tools you need to start selling online and getting huge and rich. Mm-hmm. Create pro level videos effortlessly. The Squarespace Video Studio app helps you make and share engaging videos to tell your story, grow your audience, and drive sales. Here's the story I want to tell. I used Squarespace once. My dingle donger got huge, and I got a hundred thousand. I got a hundred dollars. Whoa! In the mail from who? I don't know. I don't know. It was an empty. It was an envelope with nothing on it. That was actually from me. I wanted you to invest that. I got a letter from the Census Bureau that's like, hey, we're doing this thing on a national survey of children's health. Will you fill it out? And I was like, uh, I guess so. And I looked further in the letter. There's a $5 bill inside of it. Did you know they were doing that? Thanks, Census. <laughs> Buy myself a Three Musketeers. What were we doing? Advertisement. Yes. Go to squarespace.com slash my brother for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, use offer code my brother to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. And we probably should say here, that this we're having a really fun time. Yeah, absolutely. But it's, Clearly. But it's a but these are not these are jokes. And Squarespace I think would be pretty PO'd if we didn't say that like when we said that all of your bones would revolt and leave your body if you don't tell everyone you know about this episode of the podcast in Squarespace, then your something bad will happen to your bones or God will make your business rich. Um that probably won't happen. Legally we have to say that here at the end. Yeah. But it definitely will. But wink Hi everyone, I'm Anna McLeod And I'm Alexis B. Preston And we host a show called Comfort Creatures The show for every animal lover Be it a creature of scales, six legs, fur, feathers or fiction Comfort Creatures is a show for people who prefer their friends to have paws instead of hands. Unless they are raccoon hands, that is okay. That is absolutely okay, yeah. Yes. Every Thursday, we will be talking to guests about their pets, learning about pets in history, art, and even fiction. Plus, we'll discover differences between pet ownership across the pond. It's going to be a hoot on Maximum Fun. Hi, everybody. My name is Justin McElroy. And I'm Sydney McElroy. Dr. Sydney McElroy. That, that is true. It's important in this context because we host a medical history podcast called Sawbones. Oh, I thought we were going to. We should have worked on that. Sawbones. Sawbones isn't afraid to ask the hard-hitting questions. Like, are vaccines as safe and reliable as they want us to believe? Yes. Do I have to get a flu shot? Yes. Uh, okay. Is science a miracle? No. We have a lot of great history for you and a lot of laughs. And sometimes the history is so bad that there's no laughs. But you'll learn something, you'll feel something. And it's always sawbones. That's right. <laughs> Every week on MaximumFun.org. Okay, your, your, your middle name is Macho. But uh, I'm wondering if you ever cry. You ever has a macho man ever cried? Oh, yeah. Really? Uh huh. It's okay for macho men to show every emotion available right there, you know, because I've cried a thousand times, I'm going to cry some more. But I've soared with the eagles and I've slithered with the snakes and I've been everywhere in between. And I'm going to tell you something right now. There's one guarantee in life and that there are no guarantees. Yeah. And Mm -hmm. I understand this. (laughs) Yeah. Nobody likes a quitter. Nobody said life was easy. So if you get knocked down, take the standing eight count, get back up and fight again. And you're a macho maniac. Dig it. There it is, guys. I mean, yeah, there it is from the macho man himself. Do you remember when macho man body slammed toxic masculinity? Yeah, thank you, Macho Man. Fuck, yeah, dude. Remember when all Hulk Hogan ever body slammed was fucking Richard Belzer? Yeah. (laughs) Don't tell (laughs) Fuck him. All I'm saying is Macho Man. Impress freedom. Those two things were body slammed by Hulk Hogan. We've never fully discussed this as a society, I think. Macho Man, Randy Savage's ability to 
use the two word phrase "oh yeah" in so many different ways. Just that, like, it's have you ever tried? It's an oh, interjection. Yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. It's, it's an interrogative. It oh, was yeah? fucking poetry when he said, "I love that." Oh yeah, Macho Man's cried. Yeah, pa- macho, yeah, and it's, it can even be more passive than that. Macho Man, do you want some blackberry cobbler? Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Oh, oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I heard that when Macho Man cries, the tears don't f- drip down his face. They, like, come out. Okay. They, like, gleek. Uh, they gleek he out of his eyes. It. <laughs> Brother, I'm going to blast you with my tear juice. That's very macho. Um, I train and teach at a local Krav Maga gym. Ah. Ah, yeah. The beautiful dance. The art. The sweet science. Recently, we had a 78-year-old man join our gym. And started attending classes, and he beat everyone to death. No, sorry. <laughs> I misread. I misread. He's just old. He came to one of my classes, but ended up leaving after about 20 minutes. Gotten all he needed to, I guess. Just wanted to learn how to punch his mailman in the face. <laughs> and now he's ready to go. No, I don't think that's it. Um, the next day at another instructor's class, he came up to me and said, I, I wrote a poem about your class yesterday. Do you want to see? I said, Okay. <laughs> Then he went out to his car, but instead of getting the poem, he drove away. (laughs) We have seen one another at the gym multiple times since then, but neither of us have mentioned this poem. Brothers, how can I unlock the old man (laughs) Krav Maga poem? That's from Troubled in Tennessee. This can't be, this can't be real, right? I mean, this can't be real. Well, you know, in, uh, so I, I built a question list and in picking this question, not until this moment did the possibility occur to me that perhaps uh, in in poem form, it's like a performance art thing it's where the a, poem it's a he performance wrote. performance poem. Thank you. Yeah, wow. the, the performance he wrote is the leaving. Or he was like, just, right. what's it mean to you? Like, I did a performance art piece about your right. Krav Maga. And here it is. I'd like to do it for you right now. Also, let me just say, it has also occurred to me, if if you are ever in this uh, the old man's position here and you start taking the class and you're like, oh, I don't really want to take this class anymore. Um, instead of just walking out, loudly announce like, oh, wait, I already know this. I know this. <laughs> and then I'm walk punching out. punching and kicking? I can oh, do that. Oh, right. Krav Maga. Okay, I'm sorry. I I've got called it confused. something else. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I know this. I got it confused with, with quilting. Do you think, do you think, do you think there's a possibility that this old man thought he was going to a class for people that crave MAGA. <laughs> is it possible? Uh-huh. <laughs> this uh-huh. man is like, hell yeah. Hell yeah. Well, now, Justin, yeah. if I'm that's the case, MAGA. if that's the case, he made it 20 minutes. <laughs> so that's like, it's coming. It's coming. Yeah. Okay. At first, he's trying to hang in there like, yeah, this too. I guess. Yeah, also this. All right. Yeah. I don't think they're going to so, get to it. I don't think so they're gonna, maybe maybe that's a second class thing. They, they don't want to let you they don't give it away for free if you're really craving the manga. Sorry, I misread it. I was craving manga. <laughs> Sorry, I got to go. <laughs> Other languages you, are funny. you guys have any any rare one piece issues? <laughs> I uh, I like how you read them. Backwards. Uh, is it if anyone ever comes up to you and says, "I have written a poem," and then the active verb that they use in the next sentence is, "Do you want to see it?" That feels weird to me. Instead of, "Do you want to read it?" or "Do you want me to read it to you?" If they go, "I wrote a poem," do you want to see it? And then they try to take you to a second location where the mm-hmm. poem lives. No. Oh, no, no, do you no. think that's, that's what's happening, Griffin? Now. Like the old man went out to his car and then was like surprised, like, "Well, they didn't follow me." Huh. I oh. thought I just assumed they'd come with the poems at home. I okay, the poems the at home board. is interesting. Like if he thought it was in the car and he's like, I'm gonna get that fucking poem. And then yeah. he goes out and it's like the poem's not here. And then he's like, I should go back in and tell him. Oh, but I'm so embarrassed. <laughs> like, That's happened to me with my wallet at a store. Handed. I'll just go in and recite as much as I remember. No, David, god damn it. Don't. It's so embarrassing. As that I, that has happened to me at a, like a grocery store or something, like where I've bought all the groceries up to the front and realized it in my wallet. And I said, I must have left it out of the car. I go out in the car. The wallet's not there. And then there's the question of like, well, I'm not going to go back in and say, so I drive home. Do I get my wallet? Do I just say like, well, let's scrap it for the day. Yeah, right? You had a good run. Didn't quite get there. It happens. This is, this is for me a non-issue. Oh? 
Because if someone ever came up to me and said, I have a poem I wrote about something you did, and now I'm going to do it to you right now, and you you can't, oh, it's in the car, and then they leave and don't come back, I have just avoided uh, a, a social interaction that would have shaved years off of my life. Yeah, that would be a tricky needle to thread, for Unless sure. it's really good. Unless... Unless you think really this twenty good. minute, twenty minute observed Krav Maga poem is gonna is on some real Robert Frost shit? What I'm saying is that perhaps the reason that he left your class early is because inspiration struck him so hard that he had to grasp the reins and hold on tight, and yeah. it was not up to him when he pursued the muse, but rather the muse pursued him, and he had yeah. to like follow and write it, and and like. It just moved him so much that he had to go write this poem. But he did say he had already written it. Yes. Well, this was the following day. Yeah. But then he went home and he was like, they're not ready for this. If I give them this poem, it'll change the way that they think about Krav Maga, and they're not ready for that. This is a bank error in your favor. (laughs) You've done very well. You have broken this... You have you have somehow bugged out this NPC interaction that was going to make you very uncomfortable. Yes, and that's dope. I yes. would love the sweet cheat codes that you are rocking, my friend, so that I can avoid any other stranger poem sort of moments that may happen to me in my lifetime. I don't know when that would be. Perhaps when I'm strolling the the streets of Paris at nighttime. Uh, with with my lady love and some bohemian type comes up to me at the riverside, uh, uh and you know is like, give me five dollars. You know how they do. Yeah, how they do it. You know I, how the bohemian types are always doing that for five dollars in Paris, where they want U.S. currency. Um, this hey. is this is a fundamental difference betwixt Griffin and I. Of in Cincinnati, a gentleman has approached me and said, "For five dollars, I'll do a poem on you." No lie, I said yes, of course. I handed him five dollars. Now I do not remember the poem, but I remember enjoying it thoroughly and saying thank you very much and tipping him an extra five dollars because it was such a wonderful poem. And I went on about my day feeling inspired. Well, I mean, on the day where I told the poem man that I didn't want the poem, I went on to do a bunch of other really good stuff. Oh, um, like what? So, well, you know, I helped. I bought some apples for the school. Yeah, like computers. <laughs> what Apple computers? No, um, just like the eaten kind. Enough uh, for everybody. For, yeah, enough for the whole school. I bought apples for them all. And well, that's a lot. A lot. Of, that's a lot of apples, dude. It cost me so much money, and then I did. I went to the hospital and helped, like, fixed a couple people. Well, you know what I heard, Griffin? A lot of those people ended up in the hospital because someone had bought all the apples, and they were having apple deficiencies, and it made them really sick. So they had to go to the hospital. Well, as is, you know, you do something nice for someone, and <sighs> yeah. And also, I heard, Griffin, that the people you did fix were serial killers. What? Oh. Yeah. Okay, but I did other good stuff that day too. Like what? The day where I said no to the poem man yeah, and like fixed what? the serial killers and stole all the apples from the rest of the world and gave it to one school. Yeah. Which honestly, now that I'm thinking back about it, was probably good on apples, but I was just feeling really guilty about the poem guy. Yeah. yeah. What else did you do that day, Griffin? Oh, I bought season three of Lost. Oh, that was DVD, really kind of you. Yeah. And I gave it to the library. So oh, like I gave a all my lost copy? DVDs uh, to the library, and I was like, "Give these out to kids who want to go on this like mis- mysterious adventure now, with um, everyone." Was that the season three box set that was discontinued because it spontaneously would combust and like catch fire to whatever building it was in? This is how is a DVD going to come? That doesn't make any sense. Well, yeah, right. you gotta, you gotta focus the other stuff we've been saying has been like funny, but like yeah. real, like make you think. Yeah. Like it's mm, been funny. That's and real, what I like when it think. like you kind of hmm. Yeah, like you when know? I was like, I bought all the apples, and you're like, but then there's no apples for other people. That's yeah. real, and that make you think. But when you're like, the lost DVDs burn up and burn your house down, that does not make me think. <laughs> How would a DVD even do that, Travis? How would a DVD do that? Uh, it it caught the light sort- and refracted it in such a way that the house burned down. That's never happened ever. Yes. I want a munch. Squad. Squad. Bop. Wow, guys. Can you give me a little bit fucking more than that, please? You made a squishy noise in the middle, Justin. (laughs) Just a little bit more than that, please. I don't want to scare the kitty. Hey, she's still there. You don't know where I'm at. 
Uh, da, 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 da. I want a munch. Squad. I'm loving. I'm loving the beer, but I feel like when you start to bust out butt rock riffs on it, it goes. It turns on me just a uh, just a I little bit. I don't that. know why. Okay, I'm a challenging man now. I'm aesthetically more challenging than I was before. It takes a refined palate, but those that are into it, they get it. You know what they I mean? Know. They get it. Yeah, Ray J. Sure. <laughs> what did he do? Ray J is helping out Crystal, getting oh, back to late you. night. Finally, Crystal is the original slider of the South. It's the South's version of White Castle. You understand? I've uh, never heard. I've literally never heard of this fuck once in my Crystal. life. Uh, real quick to spotlight all things, because I have another thing I want to say. Uh, real quick. Uh, to spotlight all things fun after dark, Crystal is partnering with American actor, singer, and TV personality Ray J for a series of commercials. Quote, more of our restaurants are staying open later, striving to meet the Crystal Crave as our guests are mm. getting out and enjoying the nightlife. Hey, guess having a fun time at the clubs and the, with the nightlife and everything? Do you want to get small hamburgers from Ray J? <laughs> Weird. They make you feel super big. And I, got, that's I, fun. I got to the next hot spot for us. Small hamburgers from Ray J. It's weird that you would need to do a commercial to advertise keeping your restaurant open late because of high demand. That is an excellent point. <laughs> uh, the 199 Crystal Snack is uh, 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 is uh, a, a new option there. It's valid at uh, participating restaurants, which they always clarify. But like, I feel like if a restaurant is not participating, that's a pretty good sign that you're not going to walk away with that particular del delicacy. Well, and not only that, Crystal, you're in charge. Make them participate. Why are you giving yeah. your restaurants like I don't want to do that deal? Also, I don't think you can just have an item on the menu that is name of restaurant snack. I think if I ever went to McDonald's and they're like, "Do you want McDonald's snack?" I would be like. <laughs> Can no, that sounds a little way sinister, more specific. Actually. Well, <laughs> especially when the name of the restaurant is another noun. Like, do you yeah. want a crystal snack? It sounds like what? something a rock golem would it would Right. Eat. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. With a side of pebbles? What are you talking about? Uh real quick, I just want to mention that Ray J actually this is a quote. Ray J actually reached out to us Great. through our head of creative marketing. You guys know the head of creative marketing for Crystal, right? Two chains. <laughs> no, he wins oh. two chains. And he okay. wanted to get involved in spreading the word, word about Crystal. They're Not building a lot of people like an the MCU of sponsors. He's like, yeah. hi, it's Ray J. I'd like to help get the word out about Crystal. <laughs> yeah. and not a lot of people know this, but two chains got his name because he owns two different uh, things in the <laughs> restaurant chain Crystals. <laughs> There's two different restaurants. <laughs> Oh man, um, that's got to be a humble two pot chains, slice. one on I sixty four and the other one on I seventy five. Stop on by anytime you want to. Be happy that, to see you. That's got to take a little bit of the wind out of two chain sales, where he's like, I cannot get this across the finish line on my own. Two chains. I'm. I must. I must bring him. I must assemble the team. I don't have the. I don't have the like self confidence to become three chains. No. That point in the beach where there was only two chains. That's when I was carrying you. I'm Ray J. <laughs> I do want to say, uh, not a lot quick. of people know this. It's short for Ray Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> I want to don't think so. Um, I want to check in real quick on Carl Laredo, uh, my one of my favorite uh hype men in the biz. I'm worried about Carl. Wendy's is adding sweet twists to its breakfast menu. That's right, home style French toast sticks. It's happening, it's a sweet new taste at when at Wendy's. But how did they settle on this? Well, Carl said. Our homestyle French toast sticks strike a perfect note of nostalgia and bring even more morning flavor to our menu, this time with something sweet. From day one, we launched our breakfast offering to save fans from the boring and bland morning options that exist at some of our competitors. Yep. Tear and we've up. done just that. So you get, so Car they were like, Carl, I love when QSR do does this. They did an interview. They're like, Carl, how in the fuck, man? This, how did you do this? And he said, we have a couple of options and we really honed in on French toast as a platform. Yeah. The I love when he uses that word. The reason being is that there's there's only certain foods at breakfast time that consumers love, but are really difficult to actually put together. Yes. But also carry a lot of emotional benefits. Oh, fuck yeah. So we started this program of focusing on nostalgia. We could have done waffles, but you know, unfortunately, waffles... <laughs> There's so many that are out there, and yep. yeah. they're really bad. <laughs> so I 
Carl. And and it harkens back to mom or dad pulling out waffles in the freezer. And there's always freezer burn. Yeah. It's not, like, <laughs> is this all real? This is, bud, I'm just reading it. <laughs> Carl is a fucking artist. He's like the Gene he's Shepherd a he's the, like of our time. The story he's creating, I am sucked into this. So, so it harkens back to mom or dad pulling waffles out of the freezer. There's always freezer burn. It wasn't really all that special. Yeah. Pancakes, which are honestly just like dry mix, and you mix water and then you throw it in a pan. Take that, fucking pancakes! You're like, on blast. Carl Lorena is coming House for you. Bullshit. Fuck. Yeah. Fuck that play. Anyway. It's in a pan. It lacked a little bit of the extra love that's needed. French toast? Oh, for now, French toast is interesting. Now, let's, now I'm interested. So with our research, we discovered French toast is one of those things that was super special. Hi, I'm a researcher, Carl, and I've got the report <laughs> in. And it turns out French toast is super special. He's you were right. Our hypothesis <laughs> was right. He just swirls a beaker around and the fluid turns from blue to purple and he's like, it's special. Can you tell, Carl? It's Confirmed. super special. I watched, I watched <laughs> the French toast molecule collide with the syrup molecule and we did it. The God particle. <laughs> it's extremely special, Carl. Smell this beaker. Oh, what is that? Waffles. That's not special. No, this is conjuring oh. images of freezer burn and uh, just mother and father taking him out of the, the freezer. It's like my mother and father, who I hate. Now this. Real quick, what's the key differentiating factor of your French toast sticks from the others? Carl what? says, it took us a year. <laughs> it took us a year. We went through 18 different, uh, whenever they say that, I always wonder, is that like six of the same people rolling up to the office every morning? They're like, well, time to make some more fucking French toast. <laughs> Uh, this is Carl Fuck. Laredo, a uh, French fry visionary. So yes, Justin, I'm going to say that this was Carl and maybe a team of five that had to Carl rotate CMO. out. Carl CMO, he's just a hype man. He's not out there. He's not like Chef Mike out there like developing recipes. Like he is. Uh, perhaps you don't just... remember the fucking poetry that uh, Carl Laredo laid down about Wendy's new crispy fries. No, I know he spits words, but he doesn't like fry fries himself. Yeah. You assume about... it took us a year. We went through 18 different iterations to get this right. So if I could just do a little bit of math uh, real quick, if everyone could just be patient. I'm just pulling up my calculator real quick. Nope, that's my calendar. God. Are you dividing 365 by 18? So if real quick, if I divide 365 by 18, I get 20. So... They would make it for 20 days. <laughs> Every 20 days, they're like, no, no, I quit. Do it yeah. again. Uh, Get me a new batch of French toast of chefs. Of chefs. You're out. <laughs> we have to make the French toast just like your mom, grandma, your dad, whoever it was that made it in your house. The talking dog, the robot butler, whatever it is. <laughs> <laughs> the big French ghost. The well boy. <laughs> the magic oven. Whatever. The we the Whatever well made your French Whoever. toast, dude. Well boy. You're Sometimes you just wake up and the French toast is there and you live alone and you're not sure. <laughs> you're Whatever. Candelabra. You're, you're <laughs> a three D printer. Whoever it doesn't made... matter. The French toast tree you grew outside that everyone said would never work, <laughs> but look where you got. The void gate in the ceiling. We Wherever get it. you get it from. Doesn't matter. So we went through, okay, so, they, so we start with Texas toast. It goes through an actual egg and dairy and vanilla sugar mix. It's Royale. It's a, yeah. it's a custard. I'm just reading, by the way. If I had it's to realize, wow, I would, okay. Yeah, it's a Royale. It's a custard. We make sure it sits in this Royale for the right amount of time. Notice he's not saying the right amount of time. No, he's not like, giving that away. Wow, that's trade secret. It's got to absorb and then actually go through a griddle process yeah because you actually want to get all the caramelization around the french toast to get that caramelization color yeah. and more yeah. importantly the flavor then when we get it to a restaurant this is just a quick flash fry to get it crispy on the outside and you maintain the custard interior that's what we wanted to Beautiful. land on it took us this long because we didn't want to launch until we got it right hey if i could just say carl Fucking great instincts, man. Yeah, man. Yeah. <laughs> like, you don't want to do a you don't want to do a soft open on this one on some shitty yeah, toast. No way. We're at, this one's in beta, so just 
try it. And if you don't like it, it's it's fine. We weren't going to stick with it anyway. It's fine. I do want to say it sounds like he did describe how to make French toast. Which... Yes. Which I should mention is not hard to do, my friend. No, <laughs> it's really not. not. If that's the goal, it's like, my mom won't make me French toast anymore. I'm going to Wendy's. <laughs> Sorry, dad. <laughs> no time for this. Anyway, there. you know how you're... you're uh, Caregiver always cut your French toast into sticks and then put it in a cardboard sleeve and charge you five dollars for it. Well, <laughs> yeah, the memory, the magic is back, but unfortunately, the magic is also ended. Damn, I bet you putting them in the in a frosty, I bet that goes down real smooth. Oh fuck yeah! The magic, I mean, of podcasting. We've made podcasts. We've had a great time. Enjoyed each other's company. Enjoyed your company while well, you were kind enough to be here with us. But this show has come to an end. Not that it is a show. It is a conversation. And not that it's yeah. come to an end, because now we have important details we need to share with you. Correct, uh, Travis. It's a conversation. Well, we have an ad survey running right now uh, over at MaximumFun.org slash survey. It's an annual- That sounds like business stuff. Okay. It's an annual survey uh, that helps to make sure our advertisers are well-matched with their audience, so thank you very much. Uh, we're going to be at DragonCon September 1st through the 5th. Uh, details are coming soon. We're going to update bit.ly slash Tours as soon as we have more info. And folks, we are so excited. We have brand new tour dates. If you are in or around or want to get to San Jose, California or Denver, we're going to be in San Jose with an Adventure Zone show September 29th. Uh, San Jose again on September 30th with My Brother, My Brother and Me. And we're going to be in Denver October 1st with My Brother, My Brother and Me. Uh, those tickets are going to go on sale this Friday, the 19th at noon local to those shows. Uh, so one more time, September 29th, San Jose, Taz. September 30th, San Jose, My Brother, My Brother and Me. And October 1st, Denver, MBMBAM. That's this Friday, tickets go on sale noon local time. You can get those tickets at bit.ly slash McElroy Tours. Exciting stuff. Speaking of, you can head there, bit.ly slash McElroy Tours to get tickets for Washington, D.C., uh, Detroit, Michigan, and Cincinnati, Ohio in the fall and November. Mask and proof of full vaccination or negative COVID test within 72 hours of event start is required. We got a whole bunch of great merch over at McElroyMerch.com, including a Garo plushie that is so cute. So good. And if God's not dead, how do you explain these gains t-shirt by Lucas Hespenheide? Uh, 10% Speaking of, of explaining things, I tried to explain that shirt to Sydney, and it didn't go great. No, it's, no. it's un, unexplainable, inexplicable. Uh, 10% of all proceeds this month uh, for merch sales go to the Center for Reproductive Rights. So check all that stuff out at MacRoyMerch.com. Pre-orders for the 11th hour are uh, fifth graphic novel in the Adventure Zone series, uh, the pre-orders are open now. If you go to theadventurezonecomic.com, it's going to come out February 21st, 2023. Get that pre-order now. Uh, thanks to Montaigne for the use of our, our theme song, My Life is Better With You. Uh, it's, a, it's a dope track. Montaigne actually has some new, some new tracks out uh, that are... They, they make, they'll make it your booty... Pop, like pop to the music to the rhythm in a good way be. in a great way in okay, a great, great way it feels great um i was i was doing that yesterday and it felt su it was good for my back oh and okay the music was great and the music was great too so check those out um and thanks to maximum fun for having us on the network thanks maximum fun you're for welcome us on the network whoa jesse where'd you come from it's me jesse i've descended from the heavens whoa cool yep um so that's it for the show. I love you, Griffin. Uh, how, how do we end it? Do you know how long it's been since we've sat down to record one to of record these? It. Bam, bam, it's been forever, forever. Yeah. Yeah. How yeah. do we? And end in them? fact, maybe this is a good time for us to do like a quick re a reboot, of a the refresh ending. of how we end the show. And maybe, and this is just something I've been kicking around for a while. It's not uh, always contingent on me uh, saying a funny thing at the end of it. Well, it's just I think like, it would be cool. Justin and that, I do we have so gotten much this work. far though. Yeah, yeah, With yeah. That. For sure, for sure. And that's great. But if we could find a way to have some of the pressure be taken mm. off of me and put mm. on you all for a while, I think that that would be cool. Griffin's right. Griffin's right. So at the end of every episode, I would like Griffin to start suggesting a bit that Travis and I can try okay. next time. And then we'll see how it goes. 
but this still does feel like a lot of pressure on me to generate the like you're asking me to write just a this skit. one time just this one time i'm gonna write a skit <laughs> and then next guys time we'll, we'll, next we'll time. talk about it in between see if it works and then if that's the a one okay no more work from you required if it's not the one you just come up with another one and certainly that will be the one okay so it's, uh we're at a jamba juice okay and uh, you're bo- you both work there. You both work at the Jamba Juice. Only um, one of you is uh, like a Among Us imposter, and you're trying to do bad things to the juice. Oh, great! Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's up to the audience to try and figure out which one of you is trying to hurt the juice. But we won't tell them. So let's actually play that out right now. Oh, uh, we'll try that next week. Go My ahead name right is Justin now. McElroy. Travis, tra- J- Travis and Justin are both. <laughs> My name's Justin Jamba McElroy. Juice employees, and I'm, one of them is up to no good. I'm Travis McElroy. You what do you want which, in your can juice? Can you solve the mystery? What do you Go want ahead, in your Justin? juice? Hey, respond to that. I tried to do something different, Griffin, and you see what happened. It fucking collapsed around us like a house of cards. What do you oh, want in your juice? Oh, I would like some strawberries and. Are uh, you in the scene? Okra. Yeah, I I'm thought the you the didn't want to participate. I'm the customer. You two are employees of the Jamba Juice. I'm going to piss in your juice. Okay, you're the customer, and Travis, Start over, Travis. Don't make it that obvious. I'm pissing in your juice, like we always do. Start Start over. Start Start over. over. We can't say that about Jamba Juice. Okay, I might piss in your juice. Hi, I would like to have a... uh, Hello, can I have an okra strawberries? Hello, I'm juice! Oh, Jesus Christ. I'm a glass of juice, so no! Yeah, and I'm going to put okra in him. Oh, boy! I'm Griffin McElroy. I'm Travis McElroy. I'm Juice! This has been my brother, my brother, he kissed your dad, scrub the lips. MaximumFun.org. Comedy and culture. Artist owned. Audience supported.